hi and welcome to another episode of Wellness in the Workplace. My name is Mbali Msinyane and I am your host. Wellness in the Workplace is a podcast that aims to equip new and experienced professionals with the tools and insights to navigate challenging workplace dynamics. And on today's episode, we are continuing our series titled The HR Perspective with Boniwe Dunster, where we have been unpacking a number of HR-related topics, specifically surrounding the employee life cycle from the time of recruitment all the way until an employee leaves their job. And I have with me in studio today, HR specialist, facilitator, coach, as well as the founder of Blue Eagle Human Capital, Boniwe Dunster. Welcome to Wellness in the Workplace. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to have you in studio and to just tap into your insights around some of our, you know, pressing topics and issues in the workplace. Uh, But like I said, in relation to our series we are more specifically looking at you know the topics around recruitment around um, advancement and progression within the workplace and today's topic is really just about that promotions and career advancement in the workplace we know that not everybody has the desire or even the capability to be an entrepreneur not everybody wants to subscribe to hustle culture so for people who want to climb the corporate ladder and navigate you know their career in such a way where they see progression and advancement, this episode is specifically for you. So when we talk about career advancement, getting that promotion, when, how, and with who does one start having these types of conversations? Sure. I think the first thing to note is that career conversations should not be treated as a once-off incident or probably as an event, but it needs to be a continuation of conversations throughout your career and throughout your performance here. Mm. And those conversations often happen with your line manager because this is the person that you enter into a performance contract with and this is the person that is likely to be giving you a performance rating, Mm. of course, with the input of other people. So it is important for you to actually have meaningful conversations with your line managers, make sure you prepare for those conversations, you actually understand yourself, you understand what your strengths are, are, your developmental areas are and ideally where you want to be whether it's in the short term or long term those needs to form part of the conversation and you also need to make sure that your aspirations to grow beyond the point that you're at is communicated to the right people mm. or to the right decision makers and like I said the first person would be your line manager secondly it would be the stakeholders or the decision makers that will contribute to that decision of your growth or of your promotion. Sure. Okay. So there's a lot to unpack and you touched (laughs) on different things that we'll be talking about throughout this episode. But the one thing that you said in your opening response was that, you know, career conversations are not a once off thing. And when you say that, I immediately think about career planning. And people don't know that there is such a thing as career planning. So can you tell us a bit more about what career planning it is exactly? Um, what is the purpose of having a career mm-hmm. plan? And and who is it that you can engage with to help you develop that career plan? Sure. So when we're talking about a career plan, we're basically talking about a structure or a roadmap to where you ideally want to be. Mm -hmm. So you can start working as a consultant or probably as a graduate, but you have an idea in terms of where you want to land. And a career plan means having to map out the journey to actually get you to where you want. Mm -hmm. And it's not only about mapping out the journey, but it's also about having to list, you know, the resources that you need, the tools that you need, and, you know, what are the forms of engagements that you actually need to have to actually get there. However, people often make a mistake of thinking that their career is linear. So you're going to move from point A to B to C to D. It Mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. There's certain times that part of your growth entails having to make, you know, a lateral move, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But it would be still growth because it expands your knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you are actually being exposed to something that is outside your immediate space. Mm -hmm. And people frown upon that to say, no, that's not a promotion because we're always looking at it from a linear perspective and from an upward perspective. But expansion of scope and greater exposure would also contribute to that and the purpose of having one is that it gives you direction in terms of how to go about it and you can even note you know some of the challenges that you would you know encounter in that journey and start working towards you know those and also what is it that I currently possess what is it that I'm good at and how can I leverage of that and how do I utilize that to put myself forward Mm. and then you realize that you know I actually have a developmental gap maybe 
I lack in, in interpersonal skills, maybe I lack, you know, in people management, communication skills, or mm -hmm. having courage, courageous conversation, or sometimes it can be as far as technical skills. Mm -hmm. So you would actually include that in your career plan because that sure. means that at a certain point in time, it's not only about career mobility, but also career development in terms of how you upskill yourself. Yeah. And the people that can also help with that, you know, your line manager is oftentimes your first point of call. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we understand that other people don't have such close relations with their managers or the environment doesn't cater for that. But there would be other people within the organization that notices what you do, that support you, that encourage you, yes. and that can advocate for your work. And these could be the stakeholders that you deliver for, your counterparts, or any other person that might be senior than you that you aspire to get into their role. And these are the people that you can actually engage with share your career plan with them, share your thinking, and they can help you navigate it to a meaningful career eventually. Sure, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like you have to be very strategic about how you put together this plan. It also sure. sounds like there's a high degree or level of self-awareness in terms of what you want, where you are and where you want to go and closing the gap in between that yep. and then using all these different tools um, and means to try and get that sure. and that for me just leads to the next question around just the different components that are involved in your promotion or progression plan mm -hmm. so already when we're talking about discussions with the line manager we're talking about talent and performance management mm -hmm. of some sort when we talk about leveraging other resources or other stakeholders that's a level of uh, mentorship sure. or coaching to sure. some extent sure. and then the last one would be related I guess to the self-awareness being the mental emotional and professional preparation that you sure. need so I'd like for us to just go into each one of those points mm -hmm. because those are all relevant and I think are very important in the discussion that we're having right now so the first one is around performance and talent management sure what is that and why is it important for me to know about it specifically in the context of my career progression? Sure. It is important that you understand that obviously there is a distinction between performance and talent, but okay. you can also not manage talent without performance. Okay. Right? Because when we're talking about performance, we're really talking about you having objectives or goals, you know, or KPIs that would inform what you exactly have to deliver. Uh -huh. And your level of ability or competence or your performance rating is going to be based on your performance contract, right? So your performance contract will entail th like things that you actually have to do and the measures that goes with it as well. And then once you actually have performed against those goals, it is easy for you know for talent management to actually then kick in and okay. what I'm, and what often happens is that in other organizations they separate the two but performance and talent management are kind of like interlinked like okay. I said earlier you can't manage talent without performance yeah, yeah right yeah. so once you actually have demonstrated your abilities your competencies through performance it becomes then easier to actually understand where you are as a talent as mm. an individual right mm. and in this instance referring to talent as individuals so you understand the the talent that you have in terms of where where you are based on your performance you know are you a high performer are you consistently delivering do you need some level of development have you been consistently performing at the mm. same at the same uh, scale for the past two to three years so when organizations make decisions they would look at that which is the talent landscape or the the talent layer yeah. to say this is the caliber of people that we have mm. and this is where the gaps are this is where our strengths are and this is how we get to develop people so when they make decisions as well in terms of having to promote people rotate people or getting people seconded in different areas they would first of all look at your performance yeah right yeah so how have you been performing in the past you know is it consistent is it inconsistent sure. uh, secondly they would look in terms of how you have actually shown up you know and how you show up right because there's an element of you having to perform the tasks but there's also about how you perform those tasks mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. your behavior and how you actually get to how to how you get to show up and when someone gets promoted they look at all those things Sure. So you hardly ever get promoted purely because you've got a high rating or you have been performing exceptionally well over some time. But yeah. that has other attributes that really support that. So you can't look at performance alone, but you look at performance and the how and the behavior and, you know, 
and the conduct as well. Also, what are the developmental areas? What are the strengths? And the developmental areas are the things that we can work on them immediately, short term, long term. And if we put this particular person in this role now with these developmental areas, how does this particular move close the gap or addresses the gap? Sure, what sure. level of exposure will this sure. person um you know, get, you know, when they move into that space, right? Mm. Because sometimes when you're making these decisions, you're also not also just promoting or moving talent for the sake of talent. Yeah. You also need to make sure that you move the right people, people with the right skills and people that have the potential to learn, you know, that openness to learn to say, even if you might put them in a space that they will not immediately, you know, um, hit the ground running but yeah. you know in the next three to six months They'll you have put you, you know you have put layers on, on 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 the path for them to win and that is like i said your developmental plan those career conversations you know what exactly you want to be and does this particular move enable you to actually get to the ultimate end of yeah. where you want to be sure sure yeah that's definitely a lot to reflect on but very important points to prioritize um, and on the note around just the management of performance, which then right. feeds into the talent itself, mm-hmm. how often should we reach out for feedback from our sure. line managers? Is it a thing that you do once a year mm-hmm. around bonus time because we need a performance appraisal of some sorts? Or is it an ongoing conversation that you can have where you're saying, this is what I'm struggling with or this is what I'm doing great at. How else can you support me or what else do I need to do to make sure that you know I'm on a certain level mm-hmm. in line with a promotion sure. or a salary increase sure. uh, in that case? Like as I said earlier to say, we mustn't treat... Um, career conversations or performance conversations as an event. Mm. By event, I mean beginning of the year, you get to contract with your line manager, then media, you get to review, and then the final one, right? Mm. Which is not sufficient. So you can't go six months without Without having feedback, without getting feedback from your line manager. So it is imperative for people to have continuous conversations with their line managers. And I often encourage people to say, Meet every second week with your line manager or probably monthly, depending on how busy and if time allows, so that you constantly know if you're on the right track or not. Mm. So it's not only about receiving feedback, but you're also checking yourself if I'm still on track. Yes. Right? And your line manager might also have feedback that you might not have, you know, maybe from the stakeholders, you know, or the people that you work with sure. outside your sure. immediate department, and they can actually share that, right? So it's important so that you continuously know what you need to improve on mm-hmm. and what exactly you need to maintain. Mm-hmm. And if you do that, it makes it easier so that when you get to the end of the year, you are not surprised when they say, no, you're not going to get this promotion or yes. you're not going to get this particular rating. It becomes a shock. And the reason it becomes a shock in many times is purely because people do not see the value in continuous conversations or yeah. continuous feedback seeking process. And I mm. say to people, do not ever assume that you're on the right track. Sure. And the conversation sure. with your line manager doesn't really have to be an hour every month. You know, even a 30 minutes check-in, even a 15 minutes check-in, yeah. even even if it's a conversation around a coffee machine, but just make sure that there's always that openness around how am I doing? Yes. What can I improve? Yes. Did this particular project or deliverable meet the expected standards? Mm. How can I actually then improve, you know? All of those things, they need to be continuous. So do not have them just twice a year or when we're getting increases or bonuses because by that time, it's late. If you get a rating at the end of the year, it's late to change anything. Yeah. But have you had the conversation earlier? You could have had the opportunity to improve, to work things better, to be able to get you know um, either a better rating or a better opportunity at getting in a promotion, for yeah. example. Yeah, that's very valuable. And what I'm getting is that it's actually your responsibility to drive those conversations. Definitely. And we don't know that. A lot Definitely. of people don't know that because I guess of the um, maybe power dynamic in the context of a manager and subordinate sure. type of relationship sure. and you know the expectation and assumption mm. that it should be driven by a manager. But how are they going to know what your career is? aspirations are Mm, you know mm. so very valid point around just the ownership and the authorship of driving that conversation so on the role of mentors and sponsors Mm -hmm. right where do they fit in in the context of 
promotions and career advancement because Mm -hmm. as much as you can do all of that vouching for yourself I think that can take you to a certain level Mm -hmm. um, you know and at some point you will need then the external support either in the form of your line manager or a stakeholder that can vouch on your behalf so what is then the role of a sponsor or a mentor within the context of the organization that you're working for sure so a mentor is someone that um, has been, uh, you know, where you want to be. So, for example, if you're aspiring to be a marketing manager and mm-hmm. you are a consultant, right, yeah. you would actually want to get some level of mentorship either from the same person or, you know, anybody that's senior that it has actually been where you want to be. Yeah. And this person will actually help you to navigate and actually get to understand what needs to be done. So they, you actually talk to them or, you know, you engage with them in a sense of they tell you how they have navigated it. So mentors are people that have experience, yeah. you know, in terms of where you are and where you want to go. Mm-hmm. And they will actually share their know-how in terms of how they have actually made it, yeah. right? So it's kind of like... Um, using their map yes, <laughs> if yes, I may put it like yes, that yes. it's kind of like lo- using their map to say you know I want to be there how did you do it Yes. when you encountered this particular challenge when you were in this particular role how did you navigate that, that challenge so a mentor will always listen to you mm. and actually give you guidance and a steer on how to actually build blocks to get to where you are, yes. share their experience so that you can learn from their experience, yes. all right? So they kind of like have a blueprint of some sort and they will actually share that blueprint with you in, in order to help you advance, right? Got you, got you. And if it's your own personal mentor that you get outside, it's still good. But if it's an internal one within the organization, when it comes obviously to promotions and maybe that mentor has been allocated to you as part of the performance or talent process, mm. then obviously certain points, then they will also give feedback you know to your line manager or to human capital around you know what this is how the relationship has been and this is you know uh maybe the progress or the improvement that i see with mbali or the growth you know sometimes they don't really have to go into detail because certain things you might want to keep them confidential you know Mm. but they give you guidance because they've actually been Been there there. yeah so they go through this thing with you and they can share the Mm, know-how and then with the sponsorship sponsorship it's it's different but obviously it's somebody that will also be close to you that also knows and understands your career aspirations yeah and a sponsor is somebody that moves you from point a to b from b to e wherever you know they always out there putting your name you know there is there is a marketing executive role wherever say no you know, I've got this person that's in Bali, you know, explore her if she if he if she's interested. Yes. And then that's what happens. So sponsors, they would actually be your advocates, mm. if I may put it like that, mm. right? They will be your advocates. That's a good way of it. They will they will actually place you where the right opportunities are. Yeah. Or they will place you where they know you will learn and you will benefit for your career growth. Yeah. So they move you around and they mo- most of the time they actually even have, you know, the decision making powers, right? Or they have a, some level of influence into the decision and which of sometimes you'd find that a mentor wouldn't really have. have yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. So do I look for a sponsor? Or does a sponsor look for me? Sure, that's a difficult <laughs> question. Um, I think it can go two ways. You can ask for someone to say, you know what, um, I'd like you to be my sponsor. Mm. Uh, but it depends also on the level of relationship because also you can't sponsor someone that you don't have a good understanding uh, of in terms of their career, where they yes. want to be, and that relationship does not exist. But oftentimes you'd find that a sponsor would find you, would pick up, they would see, okay, there's this young girl, uh, you know, energetic, eager, you know, talented, willing, you know, talented, mm. has all the potential that we need. And they start identifying you. They eye you in terms of how you did. They call you into meetings. They allocate work to you. They connect you to people, right? As a sense of having to, you know, assess, you know, uh, if this is the person that I can actually, you know, uh, you know, bet on in yes. terms of having to move around. So it, it's a bit of, it's a two way, but oftentimes you'd find that sponsors would really identify people through their potential, their commitment and their drive. Yes. And they will then yes. uh, decide to say, I will sponsor this particular person in their career. Yeah. Cause a sponsor is definitely based on your 
definition is someone who would be in rooms that you're not in definitely and you want someone to be putting your name forward mm. in spaces and in rooms where you're not in when the of opportunity course. comes up so it makes it very interesting in terms of yeah. how you find a, a sponsor yeah. or if a sponsor finds you which is a slightly different conversation i think with mentorship you know definitely. because there are a lot of people that you can learn from and i think a lot more people are in the position to be mentors as opposed to being sponsors yeah. because of the decision making yeah. power that the you've power dynamics that yes. comes with it yeah yes 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 and moving on to just preparing yourself for this promotion right mm-hmm. because preparation is important you're mm-hmm. having the conversations with your line manager your talent i mean your performance rather is being managed mm-hmm. um you know you've identified a mentor a sponsor all of that now when it comes to the internal work mentally and emotionally and even professionally preparing sure. yourself sure. where do you start sure that's um that's quite a difficult one but i think the starting point is always it's about self-awareness yes right and being true to yourself mm. why do i want this particular position what is it gonna do for me yes how will i succeed in this particular position and all of those things so you need to have those first honest conversations with yourself you know why am i doing this why do i want this you know what does it mean what kind of fulfillment am i going to get so that is very important that's a very psychological and emotional conversation that you need to have with yourself yes and also that comes out of a high level of self-awareness you know and also being honest in terms of what you can do what you can do and what is it that exactly you can develop so Mm. that's very important and then again also having that conversation with your mentor if you have and potentially maybe with a coach as well and then what also is also managing your own expectations right and understanding that that promotion will not come at a point in time that you're expecting it you know so you also need i don't want to say room for disappointment i think there's a better terminology (laughs) that we can use yeah but i think it's really about having to manage your expectations right remember what i said earlier is that with a career plan Mm. it's not a linear path right yeah. so there will be detours here and there you might need to move forward you know sideways you know backwards and yes, take a break yes. and you you need to be prepared for that and that on its own can be emotionally exhausting because as people the expectation is that we need to move one way and that's and one way forward up, or forward up. Or up. <laughs> yes, you know? yes. so those are some of the things so those honest conversations are important sure and also having um a kind of a, a you know um a soundboard mm. you know people that you can bounce off your career ideas and thinking with yes. you know people that can actually also try to share some light yeah and that can actually say maybe this might not be a, a good move. A, a good move right now mm. maybe you need to park you know um, at this point in time so you need to actually have that you know um as well and again just be willing to learn be open to learning and it's one of those things to say you know if one door closes another one opens so it might not be the right time for your particular move and sometimes also understanding and acknowledging that your next move might not necessarily come from that place where you're expecting it you know that's a real conversation (laughs) you know so i'm sitting here and i'm thinking i'm going to make executive sitting here yeah but maybe your executive is actually next door or it's somewhere else Mm -hmm. and that does not necessarily mean that every time that you don't get promoted or you don't get what you want you just up and leave Mm -hmm. understand there should be context there should be reason get that feedback you know get through the emotions and then say yeah now that i have dealt with my level of disappointment can i engage in terms of what is it that i didn't do well or how can i improve Mm. so that next time i am better you know i am better prepared so it boils down to obviously maturity and self-awareness love that i love that so much and especially the point about sometimes the promotion or the next opportunity isn't where you currently are and i think um we need to be a lot more open minded about that um and when and how do you know it's time for a promotion oftentimes you have outgrown your current role it happens okay or you have the yearning to do more and you know you have upskilled yourself and developed yourself and feel that what i have acquired in terms of my knowledge my experience and my qualifications there's room for me to to do more Mm. right but at that point in time you also need to have that conversation is this just a a feeling for now is it seasonal Mm. or am i have i really outgrown the current position so if you feel that where you are 
there's no room for growth. You have covered all aspects of this particular role and of this particular space. Then you might need to start having that conversation with yourself to say, maybe I need to start looking at other opportunities or maybe I need to move up because I have actually exceeded being a consultant. Now I'm a senior consultant or now I'm a I'm a manager. Mm. But you need to fully understand that it means that where you are, you have reached the glass ceiling, then you know. Yeah, yeah. And how do you then know if it's a promotion within the organization you currently work for or if you have to look externally? <laughs> <laughs> or is that just a thing that happens organically? Not really, but you would know if maybe you have been in the same organization and have tried to move up a number of times and Got nothing you. has happened. Got you. Because in other organizations, you find that promotions can only occur through a recruitment process. So they mm. don't necessarily say, oh, you promoted because you've done this and whatever. Mm. You actually have to apply. And if you feel that I've been in the same space for a long time yeah. and I have tried and every time that I am looking for this next level, I am not getting it then maybe you might actually want to start looking outside. Mm. But also understanding what exactly will fulfill you and how will that look like internally versus how it would actually look um, externally. Yeah. And there's no harm in also trying to see, let me do a comparison. And you can only do that comparison if you put yourself out, out there, there to yeah. see what's out there in, yep. the, in the market. Yep. But oftentimes people are so committed and, you know, um, set on saying I actually have to get it here before I go anywhere else and that can actually be problematic you know because mm. if that doesn't happen then what does that say you know about you so and your plan and your plan yeah and remember what what is your plan attached to is it also attached to an organization sure or is it attached to a role or is sure. it attached to the scope of work sure. so what does that really mean as well you mm. know so you also need to actually constantly go back to that plan and like I said sometimes it means you might need to go out to come back love that love love that so any final thoughts about our topic any final thoughts considerations or recommendations in light of how one can strategically position themselves for a promotion because that's what it is it's all about having a strategy and then a game plan to execute against <laughs> that strategy yeah okay cool i think for me what's important first of all um i can never overemphasize the importance of self-awareness mm -hmm. right and then uh, secondly it is important to understand that as an employee your career is actually managed by you you have the responsibility and the accountability to drive your own career as Mbali had indicated earlier so we have this assumption or belief that it's my line manager that needs to give me feedback all the time it's my line manager that needs to set up the time it's my line manager that needs to actually make sure that I get promoted mm -hmm. but your line manager also has a career of their own sure. that they also need to manage sure so sure. you need to actually drive things on your side right so drive your visibility you know uh drive your visibility is very important understand who are the key decision makers in that promotion this is now when you're talking about strategy yes. so part of the strategy is understanding if i need to move to that role mm. who is going to make a decision on that role and am i visible to that to, them. to that particular person yeah. and it, with my visibility is it like you know uh, a meaningful um, visibility you know am i showing up you know yes. am i delivering you know am i making sure that i'm going to you know to deliver and show up the way that i had committed you know to deliver and do i even know what does that showing up mean? Mm. So having those mm. conversations, you know, as well. Mm. And also put yourself up for, for projects or assignments, you know, that will actually contribute to that next role that you that you want. Mm. And be careful. Don't just raise your hand for everything and anything, you know, and thinking that every time I raise my hand, that's going to, you know, give me a step into the promotion. Not necessarily. It needs to be meaningful work. It needs to be strategic work. It needs to be work that has meaning and that will be recognized. And I think those are some of the key things that one needs to be aware of when they're planning their strategy. Amazing, to amazing. Get promoted. Yes, yes. So where can our audience find more of your content, of your insights? Are they able to book a session with you so that you can <laughs> drop these gems with them in a one-on-one -on -one <laughs> uh, environment? Yeah, sure, definitely. So I am available on all social media platforms. So if you just look for Boniwe Dansta, um, I think in IG it's uh, Boniwe, your HR specialist. Twitter is Dansta underscore Boniwe. LinkedIn and Facebook 
and TikTok, it's Bonue Danster. And then you can also find me on my company website, which is Blue Eagle Human Capital Practice. So if you send me an email on info at blueeaglehc.co.za, I'll be able to respond and support you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the insights. Always dropping gems, always dropping a lot of information to just internalize and reflect on. As Bonue has said, you can find her on all social media platforms and you can also find wellness in the workplace on Instagram specifically at wellness in the workplace underscore on YouTube. You can find it under life with Mbali. And uh, if you want to follow me on LinkedIn, which I've never actually said before, you can <laughs> find me on LinkedIn at Mbali Mzinyane. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.